Hello and welcome to Highlights of the 1990 Japanese Grand Prix brought to you by Microposs and GP2 Joey for the penultimate round of this fascinating and dramatic 17 race season. Formula One travels to the Far East and the Honda owned world famous 3.64 mile Suzuka circuit near the city of Nagoya. Joey Davis is the man of the moment having won the last three races in a row and few would bet against him adding to his tally this weekend. Ferrari's eighth and Senna might be the champ, but Davis has collected a maximum haul of 27 points over the last three Grand Prix and is up to fourth in the championship. And the constructors' battle is getting tense as McLaren tried to catch Ferrari and Williams hunt down arrows. In the news, Finnish rookie Mika Hakkinen was confirmed at Lotus for 1991, and then news broke that the popular and talented Benetton driver Alessandro Nannini had suffered life changing injuries after the Italian was injured in a helicopter crash the week after the South African Grand Prix and had severed his lower right arm. Doctors reattacked it, but there was shock throughout the Formula One world, especially at Benetton, who were then left to choose a suitable replacement. An incoming 1991 rookie team boss, Eddie Jordan, reiterated his desire to hire Britain's Derek Warwick before Benetton eventually confirmed Hakkinen would be their driver in place of Nanini. And the troubled Dura team declared how close they were to closing their doors, whilst the hapless Life team confirmed that theirs had been permanently shut after a shocking season. Friday morning's pre-qualifying session was intense as usual, with Andrea de Cesare setting the pace early on before Philippe Elio brought out the red flags, having crashed his Coloni into the barriers at over 140 miles an hour. When the session resumed, it was the Euro brother of Oscar Larari who went fastest, but issues with his Porsche engine left teammate JJ Leto with no time to set a lap, so the team were out, as Delara, AGS and Brabham all stayed on whilst their rivals were forced to pack up early. Friday afternoon's first qualifying session saw newcomer Hacken and impress, only a few tenths away from Benetton teammate Ricardo Patrese. Whilst down at Williams, Davis was struggling once more with his car in qualifying trim. The Briton going off twice at relatively low speed as he fought with understeer and an unbalanced setup, ending the session down in 23rd place. In the end, the 200,000 crowd of Japanese fans who simply adore Senna went wild as the Brazilian ran out, the fastest ahead of Alain Prost in the McLaren and the Williams of Nigel Mansell in third. Afterwards, Davis slammed his team for again failing to give him a decent set of tools to work with, but technical boss Patrick Head swiped that maybe Davis should look more in the mirror for answers, and Benetton were rumoured to have approached Joas Racing about releasing Patrese from his 1991 deal. Saturday and Britain's Johnny Herbert was in top form again, being the initial pace setter for Arrows before Countryman Mansell eclipsed his time as Williams teammate Davis opted to spend the session focusing on his race setup. Prost topped the timing screens with 10 minutes to go and although Senna was unable to better the Frenchman's time, he held on to claim his 10th pole of the year for Ferrari as Davis only just made it into the race in 25th and Stefano Modena and Gabriele Tarquini both failed to qualify. Senna was quick to dedicate his pole to the masses of fans at Suzuka, whilst Prost remained optimistic at his chances, providing he had Lady Luck with him, and Mansell was confident of taking the fight to Senna come race day, whilst teammate Davis proclaimed that he had but only one thought on his mind by the time the lights would go out to win from the back. It was a message that excited McLaren team boss Ron Dennis, who was getting impatient for him to join his team in 1991. So it's Senna and Prost on the front row with Mansell and Martin Brundle on row two. Row three is Johnny Herbert and Gerhard Berger. Row four is Nelson Piquet and Ricardo Patrese. Row five is Mika Hakkinen and Jean Lacy. Row six is Martin Donnelly and Mark Blundell. Row seven is Roberto Moreno and Derek Warwick. Row eight is Nicola Larini and Thierry Brutzen. And on row nine, it's Eric Bernard and Satoru Nakajima. And row 10 is Aguri Suzuki and Maurizio Guzman. Row 11 is Andrea De Cesaris and Ivan Capelli. Row 12 is Yannick Dalmas and David Brabham. And at the back, it's Joey Davis and Emmanuel Ipiro. The red lights come on, and the 1990 Japanese Grand Prix is go! Send us away from 
pole position, but Alain Prost is up alongside the Ferrari as they run down towards the first turn. It's Senna still ahead of Prost, but Prost looks like he's going to take it on the inside, but he can't quite make it stick. And Senna just hangs it around the outside of turn one, and into turn two, it's Senna who cuts across the front of the McLaren. It's Prost in second, and Gerhard Berg is up into third place from six on the grid. What a tremendous start from the Austrian in the second Ferrari. Senna, as they round the right hander towards down the hill, they come towards the Dunlop turn. It's Senna ahead of Prost. He's 2.48 seconds to the good. Third and third is Brundle in fourth. And Mansell in fifth place. And Martin Brundle looks like he's going to try and have a look at Gerhard Berger for third. But I don't think he's managed it. He hasn't. Brundle, he drops back. And that's going to give Nigel Mansell the chance to see if he can pounce on the arrows. But it's Patrese in seventh. PK in eighth. Macken in ninth. What a tremendous start from the British rookie. And it's Martin Donnelly in tenth place. But back up front, Cross continues the chase on Ayrton Senna. Down towards the spoon curve they come. Brundle, he's still not been able to close the gap up back up to Gerhard Berger. But it's out and Senna set out in front and he's now three tenths of a second ahead as Mansell looks to bounce. But where's his Williams teammate, Joey Davis? There he is, Davis is up into 18th. He started 25th and already up to 18th and hounded Thierry Bootson for 17th. And it's back up front, it's Alain Prost is going to make the pass on Senna into the 130R. It's Alain Prost. He swings past ahead of Anton Senna, but Senna's not finished yet. He's in the slipstream. He's going to try and take the position back into the final turn, but he can't quite make it stick. And Prost just cuts across the front of the Ferrari. And Prost is across the line in first place at the end of the first lap. And Martin Brunner was on the attack of Gerhard Berg, who's got a good slipstream. He pulls out alongside the Ferrari. And Herbert behind pulls out alongside Nigel Mansell. And just like a couple of synchronized swimmers in 200 miles an hour race cars, the two arrows slip past their respective rival. Fantastic bit of driving. And here's a replay from Joey Davis from 25th on the grid. Let's see how his start was. He gets bogged down, he gets stuck behind one of the AGSs and David Brabham's Brabham. But you can see that he's good on the power and there's a man really Piro slipping ahead. And Davis obviously got to be very cautious here. He doesn't want to get caught up in it. Oh, you can see there are the Constantina effect now as they all thunder into the first turn. But luckily Davis, although he hit one of the Leighton houses, he doesn't seem to have any, uh, picked up any damage. And he's through and at the moment in 21st, but back up front. We're on board with Ayrton Senna now as we approach the left hand hairpin. And Senna's off! Senna's got a suspension failure on the right front. And he's out. Disaster for Ferrari. Disaster for the 200,000 supporters cheering him on. And Ayrton Senna is out of the Japanese Grand Prix before the end of lap two. Extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Joey Davis up into 13th place now. That's a phenomenal start from the 26-year-old who's already won the last few Grand Prix. And he had a target today that his only goal was to somehow get back to the front and actually end up winning this race. Surely he's not going to be able to do it. He had a torrid time in qualifying on both Friday and Saturday's session was spent just fine-tuning his car. But already Joey Davis is in up there and he's in 11th place now. And he's looking good to get into the top 10 as we see Nelson Piquet attacking Nigel Mansell. Tremendous start to the race for everybody. Well, Alain Prost is still in the lead with Martin Brundle in second, but Piquet's not giving up on Mansell. Is he going to have a look into the head, but he doesn't? As Roberto Moreno is out of the race. Brundle's in second place, three seconds behind Prost with Herbert in third. Berger fourth, Mansell fifth. Piquet's on screen now in sixth place with Ricardo Patrese seventh ahead of his rookie teammate. And Piquet looks like he's going to try and make a move on Mansell into the spoon curve, but he can't do it. Mansell keeps him back. Nigel Mansell in fifth place, and he absolutely is desperate to try and get a win today. But there's Joey Davis, his Williams teammate, sweeping past the Lotus of Martin Donnelly for 10th place. Extraordinary first couple of laps for Joey Davis, who's already up into ninth place from 25th. Is he surely not going to be able to win today? That would be quite extraordinary if he can. But Alain Prost, he's way out in front now in the McLaren Honda, who Davis is going to be joining next year. And Prost looks like he's got this race already quite comfortably in the back pocket. All he's got to do is just pray that he gets some decent reliability in Honda's backyard. And Honda will be absolutely praying that they can deliver him reliability today. But Brundle in second, he's still trying to chase after him with Johnny Herbert again performing well for Arrows in third place. And here's Davis catching Hakkinen. This is for eighth position now. Is Davis going to be able to try and do anything? 
He's in the slipstream now. He's going to try and pass Mika Hakkinen. He's going to see if he can get past him. Hakkinen tries to defend him, but I don't think he's going to be able to do anything about it. He's obviously just going to want to get to the finish, and Davis slips it up the inside, and Davis is up into eighth place as Prost is 3.6 seconds ahead of Prundle. Herbert in third is 6.3 seconds further back, and that's a McLaren, and it's Alain Prost. Yet again, Alain Prost is retiring. Smoke billowing out of the back of that McLaren. His Honda is all over the place. It's on fire. And he's out. Extraordinary. And there's Martin Brundle, the race leader. What is happening for Alain Prost this year? Sterling. Well, it's quite extraordinary that Alain Prost has had yet another retirement. This is quite... And here's Joe... Is that Nigel Mansell? There's Nelson Piquet. I'm getting confused already. Nelson Piquet slipping up the inside of Gerhard Berger with Nigel Mansell in fifth position. And Gerhard Berger drops down from third to fourth place. A tremendous start from the Austrian. And here's Nigel Mansell. And he's going to try and pass Berger as well into the 130R. Fantastic overtaking from Nigel Mansell. He's a real fantastic fighter. And I love watching Nigel drive. But let's see where his teammate Joey Davis is now. He's in seventh place. There's Davis. That's Nigel Mansell still. Sorry, I'm getting confused once again as we arrive on board. And Gerhard Berger's going to try and go for the inside. Is Berger going to be able to do anything or is Mansell going to shut the door? He slams the door shut on Berger. And portrays he's got his mirrors full of Joey Davis now as they come through the second turn. And Davis is going to be trying to see if he can get sixth base from 25th. I know I keep repeating it, but my goodness, what a performance this would be. Joey Davis already up into seventh place and he's all over the back of Ricardo Patrese. And his car, the difference in his car performance from qualifying trim into race trim is extraordinary because Davis, and he's going to see if he can get a move done. He's going to slip it up the inside. Is he going to back out of it? He does. And Ricardo Patrese still maintains sixth place as the race leader Martin Brundle is across the line. He's 4.2 seconds ahead of his teammate Johnny Herman. And this is a great race for Arrows, but again, they've been blighted a little bit with reliability issues, James. Yes, it's not been a very good season as Joey Davis slips it up the inside of Ricardo Patrese. Fantastic pass from Davis on Ricardo Patrese, who seems to be getting even worse as the years go by. He really is. And I think it's. And there's his teammate in the Benetton. It's Mika Hakkinen out. Hakkinen obviously had got some sort of an issue. I'm not sure if he spun the car or crashed it. But I wouldn't be surprised as Davis looks to have a move. And Davis has gone past Berger. So Davis is up in some sick fifth place. And he's chasing Nigel Mansell. Is he going to be able to catch his teammate? This would be quite extraordinary if Davis can catch up to Mansell. And there's Suzuki in his home race. And he's going to try and pass Maurizio Guzzoli. And he's through for 15th place. And there's Brundle up front. 6.3 seconds to the good with Herbert in second. It's PK in third. Nigel Mansell is fourth. Davis is in fifth place. And Mansell's got Davis right behind him. The two of them, the Williamses, they're side by side. And Davis retakes the position. He's through, he's ahead of Mansell and Davis is into fourth place. But I don't think that Mansell's gonna let him get away from that. He's not, Mansell's in the slipstream, he's gonna try and follow him through, but he can't. Davis was just too fast through the 130R. Through the final turn they come and across the start finish line, Davis is into fourth and Brundle, he's still now 6.5 seconds to the good and looking very good. We understand that the two arrows are going to be stopping twice today and so could Nigel Mansell, but for sure Joey Davis has already proclaimed he's going to be stopping once. And there's Gerhard Berger, obviously, for the Austrian. We're not sure what his tyre strategy is going to be today. Gerhard Berger, I've got to say, he's really impressed me this year. Although he's losing the drive to Michael Andretti next year, which I think is a phenomenal achievement. And here's Nelson Pique. And he's got Joey Davis right behind him. Davis pulls out. He's going to try and lap the ATS of Dowers, and he's through. And he almost loses it over the curb. Sorry to interrupt you, Sterling, but fantastic pass from Joey Davis. And he's up into third place. PK obviously must have got balked behind the AGS, but Davis wasn't going to waste a second. He wasn't hesitation wise. He wasn't going to hesitate behind him. And he's through phenomenal racing. And Brundle's into the pits as Herbert comes through the final turn to inherit the lead. Martin Brundle makes his first tyre stop. Davis is up into third. PK Ball. Mansell's fifth, we're on board with Joey Davis and he's hunting down Herbert as much as he possibly can and Herbert looks like he's got balk behind one of the BMS Delaras through the S's he has, Herbert's lost a hell of a lot of time, he's lost about five or six seconds because Davis is now less than a second behind him and can Davis get past him and Willy Pirro? He's struggling and Herbert is getting away from him up the left-hander on the dumb knock curb but Davis is through!
The BMS Delara looked like he was being a bit of a mobile chicane, and there's Jana Lacey in ninth position. He's behind Martin Donnelly, as Nelson Piquet's into the pits in the McLaren. And that's Herbert, Johnny Herbert. His Ilmor engine has blown, and the arrows, he's coasting to a stop as a Lacey comes past him. And there's Johnny Herbert, he's dropped down, and that means to say, quite extraordinary, that on lap 28, it's Jerry Davis in the lead as Narini comes into the pits. Quite extraordinary scenes. Joey Davis into the lead with Martin Brundle 18 seconds further back. And there's Patrese with smoke billowing out of his Ford engine. And with Benetton, he pulls over on the left hand at the hairpin and he's out. So Patrese is out as Brundle goes across the line and Joey Davis is into the pits. Davis is coming into the pits. He's going to be pulling up to his marks any second. And here we go. Davis, he's just got to get the car stuck nice and easy onto the jacks. The brakes are on. A little wipe of the visor from the chief mechanic. It's a good job that's not Patrick Head today because after what happened in qualifying trip, Patrick Head would have not only wiped his visor, no doubt, but he probably would have throttled Davis at the same time for the comments that he made on Saturday afternoon. But here we go. Let's see where Davis is going to rejoin. Is he going to come out ahead of Nigel Mansell? Let's have a look. And there's Mansell. Mansell's going to try and come through, and he can't. And Davis is back out just in front of his teammate. Fantastic stuff. Behind one of the, the LaRusses, I think that's Aguri Suzuki in front of them, but it could be Eric Bernard. It's Suzuki, but Davis is ahead of Nigel Mansell, and there's Thierry Bootsen again. Another retirement for the Joas Racing, and I'm sure that the Belgian can't wait to get out of that seat and make way for Ricardo Patrese. But Nigel Mansell's on the attack. He's going to try and pass Joey Davis into the spoon curve. Surely he's not going to be able to do it. Davis is going to take the outside line. He lets Mansell have it, and I think. Davis has probably just let him have that so that he can get a, try and get a good run on him. Out of Spoon Curve, second gear, 90 miles an hour, and Davis is going to be on full attack mode now, and Mansell's going to have his rear view mirrors full of Joey Davis, and Brundle is still 28 seconds in the lead. Brundle looking good, but here comes Joey Davis. He's alongside Mansell. Are they going to go through? He goes through, he goes ahead through the 130 yard, and is Mansell going to try and come back at him? Mansell's got to run, we're on board. Davis is going to take the outside line, he's going to block Mansell, and he can't find a way through. Fantastic stuff! Nigel Mansell's going to see if he can still stick it in the slipstream here, and he's going to try and go through the inside, and Joey Davis is just going to let him have it. Across the line they come, and Mansell's got the inside line. He's going to take the position. Through he goes, but Davis isn't having any of it. Fantastic stuff! Davis just slings it around the outside, and Mansell has to get massively out of the gas as Davis nearly loses it on the exit of the turn. And Martin Brundle, he's 29.1 seconds to the good, with Mansell in third place, and that's Yannick Dowmas who spun. The mobile chicane has spun, but look at this! It's Mansell on Davis yet again. What a battle between these two. And Mansell goes through. Davis has to concede the position. Into the 130 are they come. Davis has to get massively out of the gas, but he's got a bit of a run on Mansell. Is he going to try and go around the outside? Davis has a look, but Mansell thinks better of it. Pushes him out wide, cuts the gap off. And Martin Brundle is into the pits for his final stop. And Mansell and Davis, they are both battling to try and see if they, if their battle hasn't actually cost them any time. Because Martin Brundle, I suspect, is going to come out of the pits still in front of them. Phenomenal racing going on here as Davis Huddies tries to catch Nigel Mansell as best as he can. And Martin Brundle, no doubt, is going to be coming out of the pits into the lead still. But let's see what Davis can do. Can he get a run on, on, on... And Mansell's got blocked, I think. And Mansell is blocked by Eric Bernhardt's LaRousse. And that's going to give Joey Davis the opportunity as Mansell goes to the outside. Davis, look at the momentum from the number six, Williams. Davis pulls out behind the LaRousse. He's through. We're on board with Davis. And there's Nigel Mansell. Davis is going to try and take it. Davis is through into second place. Fantastic stuff. Davis is into second with Martin Brundle. 14 seconds to the good. Surely to God, Davis, is, he's only made one stop. He's going to try and close the gap up. And there's the race leader, Martin Brundle. It's PK in fourth place for McLaren. With Berger in fifth, Donnelly is sixth, and Alacy in seventh. And Nicola Larini's in eighth place in the Nishier. And that's an AGS slowing on the front straightaway. And Davis into the Degna 1, into Degna 2, and he is absolutely flying! Davis is catching Brundle at over two seconds a lap, and he's got older tyres. I don't know how the Englishman is managing to do this. Into the hairpin he comes. 
His tyres are squealing away and Nigel Mansell's in third place and he has dropped massively. But look at the front, the gap. It's Martin Brundle. He's only one tenth of a second ahead of Joey Davis and Davis is swarming about all over the gearbox of the arrows. Martin Brundle locks up a wheel as he goes into the left-hand hairpin. Davis has to get out of the gas and that's going to give Brundle a little bit of breathing space. But I think that Martin Brundle He's going to have to surrender the race lead, it would seem, to Joey Davis. And look at this. Davis pulls up alongside Brundle through the 130R. They're side by side, but Davis goes through. And Brundle's got a good run on him this time. And Brundle's going to try and go for the outside. Davis blocks the inside. Is Brundle going to try it? Surely not. Martin Brundle's gone round the outside in the arrows. Phenomenal pass. Just like Joey Davis did a few years ago at the same turn when he was in the march now. Martin Brundle has passed him around the outside. Fantastic pass from the Englishman. And Davis is still hounding the arrows as we look at Nigel Mansell following one of the Brabham's. And Martin Brundle is under attack again from Joey Davis. Look at this. We've got five and a half laps to go. Davis is going to try the inside and he's hit. He's hit Brundle. I'm not sure that, I don't think that was deliberate. I think that Brundle probably braked a little bit earlier than Joey Davis was anticipating. But Davis has hit him. Hopefully, both cars, they seem to be relatively undamaged. Davis hasn't lost any part of his front wing. Brundle's car seems to be handling okay. And they're going to resume their battle as they approach the 130R, the daunting 130R, the left-hander, taken at 185 miles an hour. Look at this. Brundle sweeps through. Davis is unable to close the gap, but he's two tenths behind. And through the final turn they come, Mansell is eight seconds behind him, closing. But look at this, it's Brundle with Davis behind him, PK in fourth place, Burgers in fifth, and Joey Davis is only two tenths behind him. And Davis is going to be trying to close the gap. And Brundle's slowing, and Davis goes through, they almost touch. Davis, he's through into the lead, and Martin Brundle is out. His car is slowing, I'm not sure what's happened to him. He got some sort of a technical failure. And yet again, Martin Brundle has retired from the lead. I think that's the third or fourth time this year. And that is such a shame for Martin Brundle. But Joey Davis from 25th on the grid is into the race lead. He's got Nigel Mansell behind him. Nelson Piquet. And Davis is absolutely flying. He goes across the line. He's purple in the first two sectors. And he's absolutely smashed the lap record. He's 1.7 seconds faster than anybody else has managed so far today. That is extraordinary. Phenomenal performance from Joey Davis as we look at Martin Donnelly again in sixth place. You know, he really has impressed me this year, Martin Donnelly. He's driven with great tenacity in the Lotus team. He really has. He's outperformed his team, made more experienced uh, Derek Warwick as Joey Davis comes into the deck and turns. And Davis, even though he's absolutely on it, he is absolutely on it in that Williams Renault and he's dis determined to see the chequered flag first today. Into the hairpin he comes. Joey Davis is pushing, pushing, pushing. And he's and he's lost the back end. He spun the car. Look at that. He pirouettes the Williams and just about manages to keep it going. Thankfully he didn't stall the engine. But Joey Davis with only two laps to go has spun the car and that's going to give Manson and PK the opportunity to close the gap. And I have to wonder if Davis has really lost a lot of grip with his tyres because of how much he's pushed it. And we're understanding that he is complaining over the radio. The gap to Manson and PK is four and five seconds respectively. And Davis is really struggling on his tyres now. And Manson and PK are really closing up. And there's Sean Lacey in fifth place. Another tremendous drive from the young Frenchman who's going to be replacing Davis next year at Williams. As Davis, he's into the final turn for the last time with Mansell 1.9 seconds behind. But Joey Davis, he comes over the start finish straight and Joey Davis wins the Japanese Grand Prix. Fantastic performance from the Englishman. From 25th on the grid. He was nowhere on Friday. He was even further away on Saturday. He gave himself the assurance and his fans that he was going to be going hell-bent for the race win today. And Joey Davis has delivered in spades with Mansell second, PK third, Berger fourth, Alacy fifth, Donnelly in sixth. But Davis is without doubt the driver of the day. Of the six races Davis has now won in his career, this was by far his greatest ever. Charging from 25th on the grid to the top step of the podium was quite simply an outrageous performance. And the 26-year-old was naturally elated as he collected the winner's trophy, dedicating the win to anyone who doubted he could do the job. 
Mansell said he was shocked by his teammate's drive, but couldn't resist a swipe that he was just more focused on getting to the end rather than adopting Davis's attitude of winning or crashing, whilst PK simply praised the winner for his tenacious drive. Davis's win season jumped into third place in the driver's standings ahead of Brundle, and despite the two of them tied on points, Davis is ahead due to his four wins to Brundle's one at Monaco. In the constructor standings, Williams have now passed Arrows into third and McLaren are only 11 points behind Ferrari with one race left to run and a maximum score of 15 points available. The season ends in Australia next week, but surely Davis can't equal Senna's record of five straight wins, can he? Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time for round 17 of the 1990 Formula One World Championship in Adelaide.